Hello everyone, in this video we're taking a look at an offline translator called Argos Translate. Not to be confused with Argos the shop. <laughs> oh yeah, that made it a right nightmare to find in the UK because yeah, Argos, big store. This small company and fairly unknown translator. So yeah, I have a bit of a requirement to do offline translation in that I think about a quarter of our workforce is in China and a slight difficulty with the language. You have some Chinese students? But... Yeah, we have, well, we have quite a mix of international students uh, in the university where I work, but I mean, they come to university, we have English language requirements as mm pretty much all universities do in the UK, so they everyone speaks English. There's no yeah. there's no issues. They should speak English with us, but we find them using online translators. Now why is that a problem? Well because people tend to copy and paste an entire document and give it away. It's like great <laughs> We worry about losing data and staff just give the data away. So I'm taking a look at this translator now. With Argos Translate, this is a really basic interface. We've got managing packages, so you can install some extra dictionaries. I installed the English to German dictionary, but it came installed with like some Arabic, Spanish, French, Russian, Chinese dictionaries. And these are not small files, they're about 70 meg, I think they were. So it has some concepts, not just doing a simple, what do you call it? Like a literal, literal translation. translation. Yeah. And yeah, there's the about button. So yeah, it's just you select a language and you choose which side you want to go to. So from English to German. We've got like a simple example here from English to German. So hello, how are you? Hello, wie geht's? Is how I would know that. But then I would think something like, danke, dankeschön. Be your welcome. Um, I would think that was bitter shun or bitter. But I didn't want to just try a language that I can read, so I'm going for Chinese because I have some dealings with that. I did get a bit confused on the name because Argus is not just a shop, but also Argus multilingual. I think, oh great, this is, this sounds really good if this is where it's come from, and it turns out no, it isn't actually. Uh, so looking at the Snapcraft page, I installed this as a Snap. Uh, we have the website being argosopentech.com and we have Argos Translate is the application provided here by the, what looks like, a lone developer. Now I was thinking, did he just steal the name? But I don't think that's the case because looking at the About page, he actually worked on a project previously. So yeah, in 2019 about Nextcloud Hosting. And if you Google this website, then it comes up with Nextcloud Hosting. So I think that is just a coincidence on the name. And yeah, there's some extra download packages for the languages. So a little bit of variety, but obviously not all languages. And there's a GitHub page about it as well. So we're going to do a bit of comparison with Chinese against Google Translate. Let's use an online translator, which um, I don't think they can actually access in China, can they? Because of the Great Firewall of China. So for a basic example, I would have to deal with, say, some file names. Oh, obviously that's no good there. I need to select Chinese language and oh, it's actually got a translation here to German, which is surprising because I didn't think I installed the dictionary that way, but okay, I will change it to English. So light quantify use description one ra <laughs> and and the translation being lightweight quantizer instructions. light quantifier use description you can see that the mapping there is from instructions to use description yeah a description of use uh, yeah so here's another one that translates to north of the great lakes region yeah there was actually more to this file name but i had to well remove a couple of the words didn't want to give it away too much but yeah if uh, looking at it it's horizontal and vertical drawings of the north section of the avenue <laughs> But I thought rather than just going for simple file names, let's step it up a little bit. Um, and I had a look around for some like text that I could use. So I actually got food here and another one I've got is proverbs. 
What I notice is there's a bit of a delay from when you paste the text to when the translation appears, and this delay increases the more text you paste in there. But I'm not sure it's quite so extreme with the online translations, particularly Google. So translating this menu of items uh, from Chinese into English, we have some rather something rather comical. Uh, we have for the category at the top refrigeration, so this is chilled goods. The first one being Wolf, the second one being Deaf, and then <laughs> two instances of salary water. I'd like to know what kind of water that is. The next thing isn't even a noun, it's anaesthetical abnormal. Then we have fish, paediatric vegetables, <laughs> as opposed to what? Geriatric vegetables. <laughs> A forklift and some silk. <laughs> yeah. Whereas we can see that uh, Google think it's cold dishes. And that makes a lot more sense here. We've got spiced fish, sauce, beef, although that was a bit wrong, obviously. Salted duck, brine shrimp, drunk chicken. <laughs> <laughs> drunk chicken. Which one does that map to? Anesthetical abnormal is drunk chicken. Yeah. Anesthetical abnormal. <laughs> Is drunk chicken. Okay, uh, obviously neither of them are correct there. I like how smoked fish mm. is just fish. Yeah, close. Hot and sour cabbage is actually a thing. <laughs> Pediatric vegetables. Steer belly silk. Mm. Yum. Mm. Right, and obviously if you do know Chinese, then you would better read that as it is. But obviously we don't. And not, and this is also part of the problem with the other languages. You know, I can't even read and take a guess. Whereas a lot of like Latin-based languages, you can sort of take a guess at the words. Not an option here with Mandarin and Cantonese. Hmm. And we've tried out the Cyrillic alphabet as well for Russian. Although you've got some knowledge of that, though. Yeah, I can I can read the Cyrillic alphabet. I can't make a lot of lot of things out but I can read the Cyrillic alphabet and kind of mm. guess at a pronunciation yeah let's chuck all of this in to see the uh, delay hmm so that's quite a bit of a uh, time here let's let's just compare it to how Google Translate deals with oh come on that that's horrific isn't it I count in my head 20 seconds so far and it's still yeah. thinking yeah, and I've put some quite long documents oh, in Google go. Translate, and it can do well. It's got its limits as well, but obviously this is uh, about thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be quite difficult to read because it also removes all the like paragraph lines and line separators. Oh, and it, it does say UNK, which I'm just guessing it means unknown for that part. So family. Family, family. is the category of the proverbs. There is a father who must have his son. There is a mother who must be a woman. If there is a father, there must be a son. If there is a mother, there must be a daughter. Parents are unknown. <laughs> I don't know the kindness of parents if I don't raise children. Now that makes actual sense. Yeah. But parents are unknown. Mm. I think I think it would. It's the the wording quite literally probably means I can't understand parents. Whereas yeah. the, I have a feeling Google Translate might have some, I don't know, built-in proverbs or knowledge of these, it, innate knowledge of it what does. it means. Yeah. It, it's got a lot of ideas about the language mm. beyond just the literal translation. Obviously a lot more than the Argos has. But yeah, the next one, blood water. Blood water. I, I mean, we know that. It's, it's like blood is thicker than water. Yeah. But obviously it's... It's still too literal. Blood it? water. I like I like how how in Chinese you can get the same the same concept across with just blood water. Mm. <laughs> what about that? The handcuffs are meat. <laughs> I, I I don't mm. even see the resemblance to the family category. Hand no. the handcuffs are meat. I don't even know which part this is. Of course, this is another thing about Google like when you hover over things that it does highlight and it does give you other suggestions as well like i hate to praise google like this but i know what we're comparing is an offline translator to an online translator 
Where is uh, it? <laughs> and, the, and the very last one. There is no food. We are not living in poverty. And it is not intended to be poor. If you reword that, you could have that as someone angrily saying, there is no food, but we are not living in poverty. We're not intending to be poor here. <laughs> I don't think anyone intends to be poor. <laughs> you can't eat poorly, you can't wear poorly, and you will be poor before you plan. What? That makes even less sense. <laughs> well, you can't even say Google's done well here. The children and grandchildren have a cattle for their children. <laughs> it's too much, it's too much. Right, um, do we say actually both of them suck at this point? I don't know. <laughs> Which is another downside, you can't change the font size. Uh, yep, literally there's no way of doing that. I, I don't know about doing Russian, but look, we'll just do one. So, uh, there you go. At least one. That's it. If every joke has a share of truth, but many a true word is spoken in jest. At least with this example, I suppose, you have also the kind of um, more natural English translations as well. Excuse me, it is good to be visiting, but it is better at home. It's in the corner. <laughs> I'll just Google Translate maker it. Just chat out quickly. Okay, that kind of makes some sense. In the native okay. corner, everything is at its best, so it's better to be in your native corner. It's in the corner. Literal. <laughs> so in conclusion, I have to say that translation is difficult. Yes, I think it's quite hard in order to get around the fact that there are colloquialisms in language or turns of phrase, uh, things that do not translate directly very well. But looking at the actual presentation of what is here with Argos Translate, it honestly is a bit very dull, boring. It's annoying that you can't adjust the font, and it's really annoying it removes the line breaks. Yeah, so when I was reading out some of the translations, it was difficult trying to think which one maps to which in the Google Translate, because you can't see, there's no, there's no formatting. But I can see the use of it if you don't have access to the internet or your internet's bad or you don't want to give away your works to Google or anyone else. But thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later.